Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Undisciplined Mind podcast for Thursday, January 21st, 2016. So, Sierra is still missing. Today makes it, we'll make it a week if she's still missing by the end of the day. Um, I saw another post that popped across my Facebook feed yesterday of a teenage boy who was I think a senior and similar kind of circumstance he had been whoa frack all of a sudden traffic has stopped sorry Uh, you know he was last seen at the high school and then disappeared and hasn't been seen from again and it's been 90 days Uh, so I yeah I don't know it's scary I mean I could I can imagine how I'd feel if this happened to my daughter. It, it's it's scary that they're just gone, and then you just kind of realize just how big a place the world is when you're looking for one person. Uh, the uh, local family here in Michigan actually got interviewed on the local news last night, which was interesting. Um, I, I you know. I guess every little bit helps. I, I don't know that she's come to Michigan. I suppose she could have. Who knows? It was kind of strange hearing, you know, a voice I knew, that of the worship leader at our church, you know, on the TV. That was kind of strange. Um, but that's not my main topic today. I do have some Starbucks today because it's Thursday. And the only thing that's special about Thursday is that it's the last day this semester that I am working from home. Or working from, you know, not working from home. Going to work. Fridays I'm working from home. (sighs) I forgot last week, so I've been kind of missing it. So I, I, we were watching Cutthroat Kitchen last night. And I got this update from my NFL app. And it intrigued me, so I opened it up and looked at it. And it was an announcement that the Bills, Buffalo Bills, have hired um, this woman, uh, whose name, I forget, I'm sorry, uh, as their special teams quality coach. And it is the first full-time woman coach that has been employed by an NFL team. The Cardinals have a have a, a female coach that's on their practice squad, but apparently that's not a full-time position. And in reading the article, this woman that's got the full-time position, she's been working with the Bills for like seven years on a part-time basis. So she got the promotion to full-time. And I thought that was a really cool article. And I think it wasn't the article was cool. I think it's cool that it's happening. Yeah, and, and the question that's in my mind is, is what's taking so long? Yeah, I don't really understand. I don't really understand the whole sports integration thing. Um, so let's. Uh, so I'll kind of talk about this sport by sport. So I'll start with the NFL since that's what the story is about. I don't think it's terribly likely that we'll have a bunch of women players that are going to want to play in the NFL. That are going to be because it, it is it is. Uh, I mean, most guys my height at five eight, you know, are too small to play in the NFL. Um, there might be some women that have got the physical size because size is important these days and, and can be, and have built up the strength to play in the NFL. I think that's going to be a, a fairly small number. So, you know, I think it's pretty unlikely that we're going to see a lot of women playing in the NFL. Now, if there are women that can hack it, that can do it, that want to, you know, give that abuse to their bodies and are effective at it, then by all means. Uh, but I don't think it's, it's too... It's going to be too prevalent. 
in other areas around the NFL, I'm a little surprised that there hasn't been, and football in general. So I'll, I'll lump kind of college in here as well as, as well as uh, NFL. You know, there are lots of other roles around football. You've got you've got coaching. And I see nothing wrong with a female coach. If you accept the premise that women are the intellectual equals of men, and I don't think the majority of people have a problem with that premise, I think that's been well proven. And that B, that there are women who are interested in the sport of football, and I'm married to one, I know others that at least from a fandom perspective are interested in football. I'm sure there are, I mean, there are women that, that coach for a living, just not in the NFL. There, I'm, I'm sure there are, I mean, this, we, got, we know of at least two because there's two that are coaching for the Cardinals and the Bills. You know, I'm, it's surprising to me that we don't have more coaches we just got the first female referee last last year, I think. Um, and you know, I, I think there needs to be expansion in that area. I, you know, commentating. I know of 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 one female commentator, um, and I think she commentates for college ball. And I'm talking in the booth, doing like the play-by-play, or the color, one of the two. Um, I, there's this one woman, and I don't know her name. Uh, and I usually only hear her like during bowl, during the bowl season. Uh, occasionally, you know, she doesn't do the Big Ten games, I don't think. So, but yeah, you, know, you can you can tell that the reason that that they've allowed her in the booth, if you will, is because she's got a deeper than average voice. You can still tell she's a woman, but she's, you know, she's, you know, I don't know. She's definitely a lower alto. I don't know why that matters. You know, and then we got the sideline reporters, you know, which are, uh, are predominantly women. So they've kind of carved out that niche and say, okay, women, you can work there. If you're a reporter, you can be a sideline reporter. They're not always women, but they're typically women. But at the same time, you know, I, I the attitudes towards some of those women are a little, a little confusing to me. Like there is this woman named Erin Andrews. She is a sideline reporter for Fox. She plays the game. She's part of uh, the team where Joe Buck is the one doing the the play by play. And. You know, for a sideline reporter, she seems fine. What are you doing? You're talking about, you're talking about what the teams hope to accomplish in the game because she's talked to the coaches. You're reporting on injuries. Uh, if you see, you know, people arguing, you know, whatever. I mean, you're reporting that kind of stuff. It's just kind of, kind of, you know, hard to screw that up or be ineffectual at it. You know, her reporting seems fine to me. Uh, from a, from a. Uh, con- contextual basis, you know, it's, she, the content seems, seems just fine to me. The way she delivers it is, is, is good. I, I have no problem with her. I know a couple people that just hate her. They just hate her. Um, and I don't really understand why. I asked them once and I really couldn't get much more of an answer other than, well, she's awful. And sad as it is to say, I, I I kind of attribute it to, you know, she's pretty. I mean, she's, you know, she's blonde and blue-eyed, and, and she's very attractive. And I'm not going to say she's the only attractive sideline reporter I've seen. But, you know, she's probably in the top top whatever number you want to pick of you know the most attractive sideline reporters not that I sit there ranking them but you know if you were to I'm sure somebody somewhere has got a list 
if you Google it, of the most attractive sideline reporters, she would be on that list because she's, she's pretty. I mean, I, you know. But, so I don't get that. And especially since one of the people that hates her is a woman. Yeah, I don't get it. So, yeah, I don't understand why we don't have in these support roles. You know, on the college ball side, you, you see a lot of women that are acting as trainers because I think they're nursing students uh, on the college side. But you don't see a lot of women trainers, at least that I ever see, like helping, helping an injured player in the NFL. So, another one is baseball. Uh, I, I actually read a short article this morning about a a uh, teenage girl who's like the little league sensation. Her numbers are just off the charts. And when asked what she wants to do for a career, her response was point guard for the uh, WNBA. And so the article was talking about, you know, it's sad that here you've got this baseball phenom in the Little League system. And she doesn't think the the Major League Baseball is an option. And Major League Baseball, to me, seems like it should be in the forerunner of integration of the sexes. Because it's, it's, you know, probably one of the, the less physically demanding sports. Um, and not that I, I think that women need to be in a less physically demanding sport. But I think you, got, I think you have, I mean, you can, you can, you can, people can make the case, that, oh, it's, you know, you got, you got to be, in the NFL, you got to deal with all the, the physical um, abuse. You've got to be able to stand up to alignment. You got to be able to take hits. You know, and so there's only certain body types that can really handle that. Even among men, there's only certain body types that can handle that. Um, but with baseball, you don't really have that going on. It's a non-contact sport most of the time. You know, a lot of your running is, is basically sprints over relatively short distances. You can do a, you know, in, in a sport where getting a, a batting average where you, you get a hit a third of the time is considered Hall of Fame material. You're telling me a woman can't match that? I, I have a hard time believing that. You know, I, I, you know, to me, it seems like if we want to say we really want to integrate our sports and we really want to see women players playing alongside male players, to me, the MLB is the easiest place to do that. Yeah. Now, they may or may not be home run hitters. It probably depends on whether they take steroids like their male counterparts do. And I still think people are taking steroids in baseball. Uh, you know, but, you know, there are a lot of women playing baseball and playing softball in college and younger. And to me, that's the place where you know, we should already be seeing major inroads of women into that sport. And it's a little surprising to me that we are not. I, I, don't, I, should, I didn't look. I haven't heard of any, any women coaches um, or, or trainers. I've, I've, I've never seen a woman, a female, on the field with, or in the dugout, except in the case of, of sometimes the ball boy will be a ball girl. And even that's pretty freaking rare. But it does sometimes happen. I've seen that. Um, the other one is NASCAR. You know, there's been a couple women in NASCAR. You've got Danica Patrick right now, and then there's been a couple before her. 
you know, they've never really done very well. And Danica's doing the best. It helps that she's with a major team. Uh, but she hasn't won a race yet. She's had some top 10s. She's had some top 15s. So she's placed well. A lot of the other women, yeah, the, the results weren't very good. And even Danica's aren't stellar. But she's also kind of new. Well, this was probably, what, her second year. So she's going into her third year coming up next month. Um, but it just seems like that's a sport where you know there ought to be more women that can that can take that up. I mean, you look at Danica and what she's doing, and she's a little slip of a woman. I mean, she's not a big gal, uh, you know, and she's being competitive. She may not have won a race yet, but she's definitely being competitive. You know, so you can't say that, oh, she doesn't have the strength, the arm strength or the the endurance. She obviously does. She's doing it. She's being competitive. Uh, it seems to me like there ought to be more there um, going on. I mean, and it probably needs to go all the way up through because there's like different... I don't even want to say rankings. It's not like the farm system, but there's different... You know, a lot of these guys have been racing for years, and they start on little dirt tracks doing sprint cars, and they moved up and, and whatnot. And it really needs to kind of start there and build it as kids. Uh, but I, to me, that's another prime one where we ought to be seeing more women. It shouldn't be the oddity um, or the exception that it is today. But I am... Oh, I'm not as far... Wow, I made a pretty good drive today. But I am a little bit longer. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I've, there are some sports, you know, like hockey maybe. I mean, that's going to be, once again, do you want to put up with the, with, with, the, with the abuse that a hockey player puts up with? Uh, and do you have the body type to do that or not? But it, it, So, you know, it just strikes me as... as you know, strange. I, I read this, and I'm not going to talk much about this, but, you know, you get all the hullabaloo about the Oscars and about how, uh, you know, they're, they're all white this year and, and you know, there is... Uh, Jada Pinkett Smith is, 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 is calling for a boycott because there's no, there's no black people represented in any of the nominations... And another actress, a black woman who's older, whose name I do not remember, came out and said that, you know, if, you, if we want to be fully integra- integrated, we got to stop separating ourselves and doing like the BET awards in which, you know, your primary qualification is you got to be black and things of that nature. And I, I kind of wonder if we're going the same way with some of these, you know, all women um, Sporting leagues. I think there's an old women baseball league, maybe. Uh, there's definitely, obviously, the WNBA. Uh, you know, but if if we if we want to integrate these things, and, and I think they should be. I don't think there's much of a reason why they couldn't be in most cases. In this, you know, in in the 21st century here, then people need to be working toward that, not towards setting up a women's baseball league if there isn't one already. There may not be. I haven't looked. Uh, So, yeah, that's my thought. We need more women in sports. Not necessarily as towel girls. You know? I want to see... A woman sitting next to Troy, uh, sitting well, maybe sitting next to Troy Aitman. Sure, why not? Or sitting next to Joe Buck. I actually kind of like the Joe Buck Troy Aitman vibe there, but some people hate Joe Buck, so let's put a woman in there, maybe. Why not? You're just talking about football. Joe Buck isn't a football player. He's a, you know, he's an announcer. It's what he does. He does it for multiple sports. Why can't a woman do that? No reason whatsoever in my mind. 
Anyway, I'm at 20 minutes. I am way long. I'm going to stop this for today, and uh, I will be back tomorrow. So until then, be seeing you.